Mangai to the Prime Minister, does he stand by all his government's statements and policies? Uh, with regard to evidence and information at the time of those statements, yes. But of course, when new information or evidence emerges, we acknowledge that and don't just carry on like a bigoted lefty shill. <laughs> does he consider the repeal of the ban on oil and gas exploration to be a betrayal of our Pacific neighbours? No, we do not, and the reason is very simple. We are in the middle of a transition, and rather than bringing in a whole lot of inferior Indonesian coal, which the previous government was doing, we're looking for safer products to take us. Well, that they might think this is a laughing matter here, they're scoffing over here, brought in all that Indonesian coal, trying to excuse themselves, and not even using New Zealand coal, which would have been a better, more cleaner substitute, and here we go now into a transition where gas will be very critical and when we get there we'll be able to face the Pacific nations and have done our duty with, to them as well. But the reality is, uh, I said if that was not the case, we would not have signed up to it. Words matter, Mr Robinson, not just gobbledygook. And here comes the, and the reason we signed up to it. The reason we signed up to it was because we could see under the previous administration they had no idea of the importance of international investment and the security of long-term policy which persuades people to come here. From entry question, Mr Speaker, so why is the government repealing that test from the Act? Because like everything that Labour Party put its hands on, they didn't interpret it properly. Mr Speaker, does he stand by his government's commitment to repeal the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Monetary Policy Amendment Act? Um, um, I'm certain that members and those in the gallery and those who are watching on TV are, are going to enjoy today's conversation because they're hearing so many wise words being repeated back to them, in this case by the opposition, uh, with respect to National Party members. But the Minister of Finance is wrestling with something very similar to what's emerged in Australia lately, and that is inflation, unlike the previous uh, finance minister said, is not foreign grown, it's home grown, and massively so, because of their squanderous expenditure. And that's why we had to have a talk with the Government Reserve Bank and get him to help us both ways to turn back the tide of inflation and give New Zealanders a chance to go into the future, the hope that we'll have a better cost of living. An immigration policy which he had persuaded the then government to adapt. It hardly got there, and when the handbrake went off, they ran amok, and in the last year have bought in, a, they bought in 118,000 immigrants. That's a massive record for this country. No infrastructure, no houses, no health, no nothing, and he now wants us to carry on with the same policy. No, it's important that we address the circumstances we're in right now left by them. Mr. Speaker. Uh, point of order, Kieran McAnulty. That was an interesting answer, but it wasn't to the question. The question was about the Reserve Bank, not about what was talked about. Well, the question was actually about the, a quote from the Right Honourable Winston yeah. Peters from some time ago and what the Acting Prime Minister thought of that quote. And I think he answered it fairly concisely. <laughs> Does the Prime Minister or the Acting Prime Minister agree with David Seymour that, quote, you can't trust Winston Peters and a lot of things will be much, much harder than they otherwise would? and that Winston Peters is, quote, just a muppet. The problem is he can't work with anyone. The good news is he's going down in flames. He's yesterday's man. And if not, why not? <laughs> because um, even politically, as the, book, as the good book says, nobody's beyond redemption. <laughs> nobody's for not understanding how helpful a person can be. And the people who should be the authority on that are sitting over there. Because without our open-mindedness and liberality, no one would have ever heard of those people ever again. But they hardly got the job and they thought they got there by themselves. And when the handbrake left, what a mess they were. And my evidence for that is, in their first week of being a parliamentary opposition, they asked 6,000 questions, which kind of suggests in 2023 they had no answers. <laughs> the Honourable David Seymour. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the government ever reversed uh, policy positions before, uh, such as putting on a bonfire the RNZ-TVNZ merger yeah, nice income question. insurance? Out of order. So we'll go now to question number three, four. Point of order? Better be one. Uh, it's, a, it's a question about government policy. Uh, surely I can ask about policies. No, you're, asking the about, you're asking about, you were citing a previous government's policy, and as you know, that's not oh, permissible probably. from a speaker in the past. 
Uh, can we go to question number four, Tom Rutherford? How can he stand by his decision to use parliamentary urgency to push through legislation that will increase unemployment and insecure working conditions while reducing wages when people are trying to survive a cost of living crisis? Because none of those statements uh, in that so-called question are true, uh, but they are relevant to the inheritance that this government is sadly uh, having to deal with now and desperately before Christmas. And so uh, if they'd have paid more attention to the economy rather than their woke, idiotic, left with the ide ideals, the, worker of the workers yeah. of this country would have done far better. But it's been my observation that the Greens, the economies that they admire, are all in the third world. Yeah. Point Timmy of Nauru. order uh, for you, please, Eta Pika. <laughs> point, point of order, Timmy Nauru will pack it. Uh, there are a couple of ones I could bring in, perhaps one to one, um, personal reflections or relevance to debate, one, one, two. I'll leave that up to you, please. Yes, I know, but I could also rule out your su first supplementary because it has suppositions in it. So we do try and get a degree of flow, if at all possible. Uh, but if you just restate your concerns there, because I didn't quite pick up the first one. I think uh, my concerns are that the question uh, for the Deputy Prime Minister wasn't asked, and we also take exception with reference to woke. Those aren't uh, they are personal reflections and they don't belong in this house. <laughs> yes, uh, there's, there's an awful lot of things happen in this house that don't really belong here. So um, <laughs> I think we might just let that one slide. What is his justification for repealing fair pay agreements and reducing the wages and conditions of Māori, Pacifica, young people and women, as highlighted by his own government's leaked cabinet paper? Well, first of all, the integrity of the, uh, the person answering this question on the subject of incomes and wages is that that threshold was set in the previous government, not by Labour or the Greens, but by New Zealand First. And we want the working class of this country to get fairly paid, but we want a thing called productivity. And we, we know it's only based on... Which no, it's, only, it's not nonsense, it's totally true, and I can prove it. I can go back to 2017 and prove that categorically. We know what they campaign on, so don't come here today and try and tell us what you couldn't do. And at the, at the end of uh, the last three years, the workers of this country were dramatically left down by a failed economy, and our job is to turn that around. And when we do so, We'll uplift the wages of everybody in this country. Honourable yeah, yeah. Grant Robertson. Members' pride in the minimum wage level. Can he tell the House what the minimum wage is today? Two thirty three? Twenty two twenty two seventy? Twenty two seventy? Am I right? Yeah. No, I didn't ask him. No. I was telling him. No. I said 2270, knowing that I'd have an affirmation on my right from the Minister of Finance and the Leader of the House. Over here, we consult before we open our mouth. True. Uh, don't worry, uh, Waititi. Hea hato whakautu, ki ngā rōpū e mahi ana mo ngā tamariki rawakore e karanga ana kia heke te whika O ngā tamariki rawakore, mā te pene, mā te hiki i te whiwhinga pūtea, mā te ngāwari i te hokokai me te māwiwi ārai. Uh, is, is the member going to translate that or does he want to give uh, the Minister a moment to uh, receive that translation? A point of order, Mr Speaker. No, it's only, only a question. It wasn't any kind of a direction. Absolutely not. OK. You can answer that or not. The, uh, the question doesn't need to be answered if the minister doesn't, or the prime minister in this case, doesn't feel like he wants to answer it. So, Mr. Speaker, um, a question. I mean, I guess strictly speaking, your ruling is an order. But the practice in the time I've been in the house is that that is uh, only done when a question is definitively out of order. Um, we have a simultaneous translation system in the house to allow for. Uh, members to answer. I wonder whether the right course of action here might be for Mr Waititi to repeat the question and the Acting Prime Minister to use his earpiece for the translation. Speaking, speaking of the point of order, well, uh, I've, yeah. we've got a question. Answer the question. I just wish the courtesy of the House would apply so that the person asking the question, Mr Speaker, point of order, so that the person asking the question also had the, the comfort that the people who are watching on television also are part of this parliamentary debate. 
That's what a democracy is called. It's not about, it's not about just about 5%, it's about the other 95% who pay as well. It's called one people, one country. Now back to my point. If the member's concerned, if the member's concerned about the cost of living, no, 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 on the marae, Megan, you keep quiet. Right? You do. When he knows that, he keeps quiet too. You don't shout out like some bunch of clowns at university. Yeah, just hang on. Yeah. And that member has asked the question, he deserves an answer, and I'll give it to him. If the member's concerned about the cost of living, then that is the greatest concern of this government as well.